In this movie, I'm going to run you through the new devices in Live 10, so you can learn some of the unique and useful features available on each one. We'll be looking at wavetable synth, as well as drum bus, pedal and echo audio effects, which are making a huge difference to this project, as you can hear if I temporarily disable them. Starting off with Drum Bus then, which is an incredibly handy tool for shaping and adding weight and character to drums. It combines a number of different processes, beginning initially with distortion, which is what you hear when you load up a default instance of the effect. There are three distortion types to choose from, with increasing intensity, and a dial for controlling how much the signal is driven, and so how much distortion is applied. On the level side, there's a trim dial, so if the signal is a bit hot, you can bring down the level there. And there's also a comp switch, which turns on a compressor with typical grouped drums settings, so fast attack, medium release, moderate ratio, and a fair bit of makeup. So already quite a lot going on in the first section of the effect. But then in the next two sections, you have individual control over the upper and lower frequencies of the drums, starting with the mids and highs in the centre, where you can add some sign-shaped distortion with the crunch dial. And use the damp dial to filter out the very top end if you need to. Although I wouldn't set this too low if the effect was 100% wet. And at the bottom here, you have a superb dial labelled transients which boosts the transients of frequencies above 100 Hz, so leaving the bass alone, to make the drums punchier, which can be nice to compensate for too much squashing at the compression stage. And you have two options here, one that boosts transients whilst decreasing sustain to make the drums snappier, and one that boosts transients whilst boosting sustain to make them really full on. And then at the end, there's the bass processing section, which dramatically boosts the lower end by means of a resonant filter, where the resonance, and so amount of frequency boost, is controlled by the boom dial. And then the frequency of the band below. You can click the monitor switch to solo the bass band, or audition the boom. And the great thing here is, you can see the note the frequency is closest to below, and can click the button to lock it into that note to make sure you're in tune with the key of your song. And Decay controls how long the bass frequencies last, so if they're ringing out for a bit too long, you can bring that down. And when using drum bus with extreme settings, you can make use of the dry wet amount to bring the processed sounds level down and mix some of the unprocessed sound back in. So there's a lot going on with drums bus, and you can hear the massive difference it makes to the quality of this simple drum rack track. On the next channel, I've got the wavetable synth. I'll be going into this in much more detail on a dedicated course so I'm not going to explore it too much here, because there's lots to cover. But just to give you an idea, starting with this default instance here, if I expand the delay, then you can see how much you've got on offer, and how well presented everything is. Then if I use envelope 2 to modulate oscillator 1's position, you can see each note moving through different samples in the wavetable to create a really cool sound. And there are loads of wavetables to choose from. Then I can add in the second oscillator on top, and then maybe use an LFO to modulate this one. And the polar display looks particularly nice. So 
so a brand new type of synthesis and really sweet sound going on with this new live instrument. Going back to my project then, I've got Wavetable playing one of the tasty bass presets here. But to beef it up even more, I'm going to add another new live audio effect to the chain, and that's Pedal, which is designed for processing guitars typically, but sounds great on other sources too, as you'll hear. If I crank the gain right up, then you can hear the difference between these three modes, with Overdrive providing the smoothest sound, Distortion, a more aggressive one, and Fuzz, the brightest and most broken sound. To help shape the sound further, you've got three EQ bands. With the mid band switchable between three different center frequencies. And then there's also a sub for boosting the very bottom end. So another very warm and analogue sounding device from Ableton here in Live 10. And on a similar note, the final device is Echo, which is a very versatile delay, capable of producing a wide range of effects, including the kind of huge distorted analogue sounds you get from dub delays, which we're going to recreate now. So with this lead sound, again one of the Wavetable synth presets, I'll add Echo to it. And much like Live's other stereo delays, you have controls for changing the timing of the left and right signals. Only here you have a really cool graphical display, which shows the number of echoes across the stereo field down a tunnel, where you can drag the display to change the delay timing. And when the feedback gets high, you can see the end of the tunnel gets a lot brighter. And that's when you get the loud, distorted sound out of the delay. At the bottom of the echo display is a filter, where you can shape the delayed sound to create even more resonant echoes. So this is in default stereo mode, but there's also ping pong mode going from left to right, and even mid-side mode, where the side signal can have its own independent delay. Then there's a modulation tab for changing the delays or filter settings over time, which can add extra movement and colour in extreme settings, or more of an analogue feel when subtle. And then a character tab which allows dynamics to be applied to the delayed sound via gate or duck, which can be useful to clean the sound up and add extra energy. As well as noise or wobble for additional vintage analogue textures. And there's also reverb in the global section on the end. So a huge amount of options in this last effect, which I'll go into more detail on in future tutorials. Once again then, you can hear what a dramatic transformation these new audio effects have on the sound if I deactivate them all. Stay tuned for more tutorials on Live 10's new effects in the future as well as new updated videos appearing in our complete beginner and advanced level live courses. See you next time.